Well, I'm going to talk about what if Dr. Files and Make Files uh, had a baby? So, uh, wait here. You can kind of think about that question a little bit, uh, and I think you'll kind of understand where I'm heading. But I'd like to motivate this uh, with a personal story. So this is uh, Jenkins, Mr. Jenkins, maybe? I'm not sure. So about, about three years ago, um, I was working at uh, an unnamed previous employer, um, and I had this PR that I had to get out um, because uh, it was getting towards the end of the sprint, and I wanted people to review it, and I just needed to get this code out. Um, so I knew there was going to be a backlog uh, on the build server because there always was when you had, like, towards the end of the sprint, everybody's pushing their code. Um, the builds would take forever. And the product I was working on had all these integration tests that were great. So we could do continuous deployment. You know, we could push things right through to production once it was merged into master. But the process was sort of flaky. So before I pushed everything, I ran the full integration suite locally just to make sure it wouldn't fail. Um, and I wouldn't have to wait again. And then I ran it another time uh, just in case. And then a third time. Um, and then I pushed it and I waited. And then, of course, uh, the whole thing failed. In the build, I had to wait in line, and then the whole thing fails. Um, so normally, in these situations, after like getting frustrated, uh, you know, I would just have it run again because the build was flaky, it just happened again. But today, I was feeling ambitious, so I reached out to this guy, Tom. Uh, he was kind of the build expert, uh, real name, not Tom. Um, I was frustrated and I said, like, there's something wrong with Jenkins. The build is not, uh, like it's failing and I know it worked, it ran locally. So he said he'd look into it uh, and he's really good at his job. He understood Jenkins and all this crazy groovy code uh, that I'm super afraid of. And so he looked into it and he found the problem. Um, he came back to me, he said, you know, we have these servers that run the Jenkins jobs. There's an OS dependency in your build script and uh, so Groovy like shells out and runs some command and there's some sort of OS incompatibility. Um, and that's why it's failing. It's actually not your integration tests. Uh, and I said, that's great. Um, but then he gave me the bad news, which was, you know, they were in the process of moving from those Jenkins build machines to CloudBees, which is like a hosted Jenkins thing. Um, so he said the fastest way to have this resolved for you is just we continue with the migration, um, which is gonna take about a month. Um, so I said, well, what do I do? <laughs> like, I can't wait a month. Um, he said, it's super easy. Um, like there's 10 build machines, only two have the, the problem with this OS dependency. So if you have that problem, you know, just hit rerun the build and 80% chance it'll work that second time. Um, and then at that point, <laughs> I think I basically called it a day. I'm like, how is this the world that we live in? Um, and I don't think it's Tom's fault. Like builds are just often kind of a neglected area uh, in software development and DevOps. It's just, it's not a sexy area for people to work on um, and it gets neglected. Um, oh yeah. So about me, I am Adam Gordon-Bell. I'm an open source contributor, newly a developer advocate. Uh, I'm Canadian. This is my home office here in Canada. Um, I have a podcast called Co-Recursive. Uh, there's the logo um, here. Yeah, you should check it out. Um, okay, so another story, just to motivate why we might want something uh, like Docker and make files combined. So I was working recently on GitHub Actions. Um, GitHub Actions are containerized, so I can't have this problem uh, with Jenkins, like having some sort of OS dependency. Uh, but it's just slow. I'm trying to get all these steps to run in my GitHub Actions. I have to make a change to the file, push my change to the GitHub Actions, like YAML file, wait for that to occur, uh, see if it failed or not, and then like repeat and repeat. Um, and so I end up uh, with these commit logs that look like this. And it's just a really slow process. So just try to make a change, push it, wait to see what happens, and repeat. Uh, it's super frustrating, and, and you just lose a lot of time because you're just like waiting. Um, so thinking about these two things, right? The problem is that I can't actually run the build locally. Like I want to be able to run the exact same step that's going to happen in this build process locally with the same dependencies, with the same kind of containerized environment. 
So if you think about the difference between local and CI, um, on local, you know, you can iterate really fast, but you have limited resources. It's just your dev machine um, and things might still break. On CI, like it's the source of truth. You need to, like, that's where it actually matters if your whole like comprehensive test suite pass, but you have this really slow cycle. And then depending on which thing, you know, build thing you use, it's not always truly isolated. Um, yeah. So what if you could get both? What if you could have something where you could run the build locally and still use your build server and have a kind of combined process? So this is what I want to talk about today, a uh, potential solution, uh, which is Earthly. So this diagram uh, is kind of the best way I've found to, to communicate this concept. Um, and I didn't create the diagram. But, but you have your various CI servers, whatever you might use, if it's GitHub Actions or Jenkins or something else. And then you, know, you have your language-specific build stuff like Maven or NPM and your code. But in this middle layer, you have all this stuff like, uh, you know, like YAML files, Docker files, make files, bash scripts, they kind of all come together to you know, build things. Um, so what if you had something where you could abstract all those, put them in a single place and have a way to run them anywhere uh, exactly the same as they would run uh, in the build server? So that's what Earthly is. So um, that's kind of what got me interested in Earthly, um, which is an open source project. Um, looks a lot like Docker and Make combined. Um, so I'm just going to take you through uh, a demo of it. Well, it's sort of, uh, the builds take a little bit of time, so I'm just going to do slides of a demo, but I think you should pretty quickly get the idea of uh, how Earthly works. So I'm just going to take a simple Go app, and then I'm going to build up an Earthly script where we can lint it, build it, and then containerize it. Um, so you could follow along with this demo if you want. Uh, just git clone uh, earthly demo git. Uh, if you do that, you'll kind of clone it out. Look at what's there, and you'll have a Docker file and main.go and some supporting files. If you look at the main.go, uh, it's just a hello world. If we look at the Docker file, there's a pretty standard Docker file for Go. Uh, you know, at the top we have Golang Alpine. Oops, let's go. Here we go. Excuse my one second. Yeah, so we have at the top uh, Golang Alpine. We set a working directory. Then we do some stuff, right? We copy in our files. Um, we're going to build the file, uh, set its output as demo, and then our Docker file has this entry point that starts up that demo. Uh, pretty standard. So the first thing to do to start making an earth file is we're just going to copy that Docker file over. Um, and then once we do that, you know, if we look at the Docker file, it kind of has two sections. The top part uh, is where we're working from and, and what directory we're working in. Uh, and then this second part that does all the build steps. So all we have to do to make it into an earth file is add a target. So we add this target build. Um, actually, that's not all we have to do. We also have to add the save image statement. Um, so this is going to tell Docker, sorry, this is going to tell Earthly that we're going to save this as an image that is example.latest. And once we've made that change, we can just go to the command line. We do earth plus build. Uh, the plus here uh, is just how we refer to a target. So the targets come from make, the rest of the syntax you know, comes from Docker. Um, and we just use a plus to reference it. And then there we go, we've built an image. Um, and then if we run it, hello world. Not too uh, exciting or impressive, but, but we're getting somewhere. Um, so now, uh, yeah, we've just taken a Docker file and we've made it into an Earth file. Oops. But basically you can already do this with Docker. So it's not really gonna solve any of my problems. But what if we wanted to do something else? Um, like what if our build, we want to produce an artifact. So instead of producing a Docker image, maybe I want to produce like an assembly that I'm gonna send off to Homebrew or, or distribute somehow. 
Um, then I can just take these two lines and remove them. And I can put in this new command, save artifact. So save artifact is going to take the assembly that we built here, demo. Um, and it's going to save it as local uh, into this path, build demo. So these steps, uh, because this step all runs inside of a Docker container, we copy the things inside of this container, run it, and now we're saving back out. So if we run that, uh, let's see. So we'll run that step, we see we get a bunch of output. Um, and if we look at what happens, we can see now we're building an artifact. Right, so this is something you can't do with a Docker file. Um, we run it, we get hello world. Okay, so now we've built a Docker image and an artifact. Um, but, you know, oftentimes we have to do both. So to do that is pretty simple as well. We take our existing file and now we just want to build a build script that can do both the Docker image and an assembly, starting to get closer to what an actual, what may happen inside of an actual build. Um, so we just add a new target called Docker. Um, we're going to copy in files. So these steps each run independently uh, in a container, which makes our builds nice and reproducible. So this copy step is going to copy this demo file from in our previous step in. Um, and then we just set our entry point that we had before. Um, and now we can do either. We can either build a Docker image um, or we can build our artifact. So the nice thing is we might be able to take this script, replace some sort of manual scripts that we have that are, we're running from our build process. Um, though you might be thinking up to this point that the earth file is a way to produce some sort of output. Um, and, it, and it can do that, but that's uh, not all. So oftentimes in a build, you want to do some things that are merely like pass fail, like maybe run a test for instance. Um, or run a code linter. So let's just, uh, let's do linting. So we just put in a new label, lint. We're going to run our, we're going to do this run command that will install go lint. Um, copy in our files like before. Um, and then we can run it. And now we have a step that will give us some sort of output. Um, so if you run this, probably guess what might happen. Oh, it, it actually fails because we need to install something. We have to install Git. So if we go back to our file, um, just like in a standard Docker file, uh, we can add independencies. So we just add uh, using the Alpine uh, package manager, we just add in Git. And then if we run it, um, you can see it's installing Git, success. Um, yeah, so now we're linting at the end. We have git installed and it works. Um, but what else? I think there's another problem, which is if you look at this, um, we have duplicate code actually. So we have duplicate code here. We have two commands that copy things in. Um, so we can clean that up by just adding a new section called depths. And then we copy in our code um, we'll also add in our golint command. And then in the same way before, uh, or in your standard Docker file, we can do like from Golang Alpine. Uh, we can also do a from and pick another target. So this build target is called depths and we do these steps and here we can just reference it just like it's an image. So we do from depths. So this lint command now uh, is equivalent to like inlining these steps into the previous parts. Um, and then we could do the same for build. So we've now kind of extra, extracted out some common code. Um, so yeah, so now if we run earth lint, we can get the same output as before, but now our code is a little bit cleaner. All right, so now we've done refactoring. Um, yeah, so you might want to run it all together, we run all these steps. So to do that is pretty simple. We're just gonna add a new label um, called all. And then in those steps, we can do a build of our lint step, a build of our build step, and a build of our Docker step. And you can sort of see how using this, this format, that's pretty simple. We can build up all the steps of a complicated build process 
Um, and then we can run this locally, right? We can run steps like, uh, you know, earth all locally or in our build system, we can just make a call out to earth all, or we can call individual steps. And it kind of gives us the, this ability to run our builds in, in a totally repeatable way uh, anywhere. Um, so here, if we run all, we can see it kind of goes through all the steps. You can see on the left-hand side, the build targets that it's going through. So it starts with base. Uh, and base is actually this part up at the top. This is our base image. So it calls that base. Um, and then we have our depths and then our lint, and then we build. Um, another thing, if you look at the output, you can see that these lines say cached. So just like a Docker build process works, um, it will cache individual steps. And because um, like installing Git, excuse me, because installing Git and uh, setting up a working directory and installing Golint are unlikely to change, uh, it's caching them. But our copy command, uh, it's rerunning because we made a change to our Go. So it kind of gives us this nice incremental building process where uh, steps that haven't changed, that there's no files that have changed, uh, don't have to be rerun, which can just make our builds faster. Um, yeah, so now we've shown all of these steps and you put them together, that's Earthly, which is a, you know, a Docker file and a make file combined. Um, so a couple of things about doing things this way, you get repeatable builds because every step is containerized. Um, you're not going to have any magical dependencies or magical steps that happen on, you know, the developer machine or that need to be installed uh, on a build server. Um, it's open source, uh, so you can find it on GitHub. You get uh, parallelization. So it's able to look at the graph of dependencies and determine that some of these steps can be run in parallel. Um, and you get some caching, uh, which we kind of showed towards the end. Yeah, so that's Earthly. Uh, this is the website for Earthly. Um, and this is me. Uh, so Earthly, you can find Earthly on earthly.dev. Uh, we're always looking for uh, new users to kick the tires on it uh, and contributors. Um, yeah, and I'm Adam Gordon Bell, and you can find me on Twitter at Adam Gordon Bell. And uh, yeah, that is what it would look like if you took a Docker file and a make file and they had a baby. <laughs>